Alright man, King Cooper here once again. My partner Silly man. We at Voce where y'all gonna be Friday or y'all ain't shit. But I wanna give a toast to my dog, man. He finna leave. We done came up. We done performed in the hoodest of hood clubs. Yes, Nick. On a weekly basis. Yes, Nick. Shots being fired while we on stage. Yes, Nick. Didn't miss a beat. But this one was for Silly Man, man. This is our last show together in St. Louis. For now, we moving on to bigger things. So this one for you, bro. Real one shit, more. man. One more, one more, one more. Yeah, there it is. Eunice. That's a shot. That's a clip. This is more than a shot. You little lightweights, nigga. I ain't gonna lie. Gotta keep real niggas around. You crack it up for that? This is why people looking at each other like, that's true. You gotta be real niggas around. Like, damn, how am I supposed to feel like that? They did agree with me. For real. But I think I might dedicate the rest of this set. I think I might dedicate the rest of this set to being broke. Man. Anybody else broke? We struggle. We struggle. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. It's Sick of being broke, man. I don't even know why I carry one damn wallet no more. Ain't nothing in that motherfucker. You just don't be with my outfits and shit. You got that little bulge in your shit, make a motherfucker think you got some money and shit. Ain't nothing in there. My wallet's so damn light. I can take my shit out right now and throw it up in the air. That motherfucker gonna come down like a feather. <laughs> Ain't nothing in that motherfucker. Tired of being broke, man. But the, I'm talking about that, that level of broke where it just humbles you to nothing, where you can't do shit but sit your ass in the house. I'm talking about that level of broke where it don't matter how good the deal is. Anything that costs you ain't worth it. When are you ready to take it off? Okay. It could be the best deal in the world. Nigga can run up on you like, cool. Nigga. They say God only charging ten dollars to get in heaven all night. Ten dollars. You going? Heaven, nigga. You still like for the ten? Man, I heard hell was free before eleven. I'm fucking on side of the Shit. Nigga be in hell kicking it, burning his ass off. Sweat ain't got a drink in his hand. That's all right, you got up in that motherfucker. <laughs> Real, man, sick of being broke. But the thing about me is I'm creative in my struggle. I don't know about y'all. I might be broke, but what's good about black people is we don't ever let nobody really see that we broke, dude. Right. Clap it up for that. Clap it up for you, you strong. If you strong hard. Clap it up if you strong hard. Y'all already know. More black people better be uh, in this motherfucker clapping, because I see some pretty good looking sharp motherfuckers, and all y'all clap when I say who broke, so. Y'all fucking too. All y'all ass You gotta be creative in your struggle though. Like, I remember back in the day, man, I was walking to work. 35 minutes every day to work. Now, I'm a person, I'm pretty popular in the city. I know a lot of people. You know, when you black, your pride doesn't gonna let you see motherfuckers uh, walking. You walking 35 minutes to work every day and shit. I'm sitting out here walking to work. I got on a white dicky shirt, hot ass black pants, and I'm trying to play it off every day like I'm power walking and shit. I'm just in case the motherfucker drive past and recognize me, I got the form and shit there. I had an iPod strapped to my shoulder, my headphones in and shit. Just in case the motherfucker ride past, like, damn, Coop, Coop, you need a ride? Where you headed? I'm like, nah, nigga, I'm just uh, breaking the sweat and she gets a cardio. <laughs> so you always uh, power walk with your work uniform? Oh, yeah, this motherfucker, this, this dicky suit just helping nigga sweat a little more. That's all. You gotta play that shit off, man. For real. Right now, my brakes break, bad as a motherfucker. I slid all the way here. <laughs> I on the west side. I ran 12 stop sign, 13 red lights getting in this motherfucker. Tried to Tokyo Drift into a parking spot. We got luck. Brakes bad as a motherfucker, man. You know how bad, you know how embarrassing it is? Pulling up the red lights and shit. Ain't no brakes just. <laughs> And it always be the busiest red lights in your shit that you know. There's 23 cars in every lane. You come up. Everybody look like this motherfucker finna hit one. You see the hand review mirror. I've been running lights for three straight months, man. Should I get my brakes fixed? I've been just running lights and shit. Taking that risk. You just ain't working. But I said, fuck this. I'm gonna be creative in my struggle. So I gotta drive down page every day to work. I said, you know what? I'm finna follow this motherfucking page, bro.
bus every day to work. And blame my shit in with that. Every time, every life we come to, I'm right behind the page bus. Soon as that motherfucker stop, I'm stopping right with it. Blame my shit right in with that. <laughs> that motherfucker ain't gonna know that's my shit. They're like, that ain't too cool. I don't have to get to work. I'm stopping every time they stop. They got so bad, I just start picking motherfuckers off the bus stop. I'm like, shit, I stop every day. Hey, I got, I got room for three more in here. Come on. No, I'm going that way. I'm gonna be right behind the bus. Just get off at your stop. I've been making bread doing that shit. Oh, this shit's gonna be $2. I'm gonna need that motherfucker. You get a seat belt. I got heated seats, a radio, all type of shit. Oh, I still need that $2. Damn right. And you ain't gotta be on that musty motherfucker. For real. I'm out here. Y'all better saw you being creative in your shirt. I do. Be crazy in your struggle, Miss Lady. You already know. I done been on that damn bus, man. That shit, the struggle is real. But I got so much damn pride. I'm the flash nigga on the bus stop. I told you, I'm going to be down. I ain't going to look down. Everybody be using their little uh, bus passes, weekly cars, monthly cars to use that shit. I'm too proud to use that shit. I catch the bus every day at one point. I was going to use cash every time. So anybody see me going in, that might recognize me, you like, well, damn, he using cash, so he probably don't ride this motherfucker every day. You know, motherfuckers with cars using that shit every day. I got my car keys swinging, I ain't got no car, but I'm walking down the bus aisle with my car keys in my hand, just so everybody know. I'm a little bit better than everybody on here. I got a car, it just broke down right now. Some of y'all need this mug, I just choose to ride this mug. You see this car, car key hanging on my finger. You see this motherfucker. We gonna be broke and bougie. I need you. <laughs> That's real shit, baby. That's real shit. Broke and bougie. She was crazy, man. What was I though? Oh, what else? What else we want to talk about? I was going to talk. Oh, weed. That's right. I'm in search of a new weed, man. Um, if you said weed, please make some noise. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I've been buying weed from this dude for a year and a half just come to find out this damn motherfucker, he a preacher's son. <laughs> How you gonna be a full-time drug dealer and a preacher's son? I ain't even know, I found out the hard day one time. I called this nigga to get some weed. He answered the phone. Hello. All I heard in the background was, Amen, Amen. I said, Yeah, but this me, I'm in church. <laughs> what the fuck would you be doing in a place like that? You sell weed, nigga. He said, yeah, but you, you know, I'm, I'm a choir director, too. <laughs> a choir director? But you sell weed. This nigga talking about, yeah, but my, you know, my daddy a preacher. I try to get, you know what I'm saying? I just try to stay balanced and shit. <laughs> This nigga got the choir in there singing all the little ass songs. He remixing rap songs to uh, biblical shit. And that motherfucker rocking and shit. All you hear is, We've been down so long, but Jesus up to me. We look up to thee. I got fake Christians showing fake love. And I got Southside Reggie in the church. And they put him in a position? This nigga choir director? But that ain't do it though. I kept buying weed from him. I'm like, alright. I, I bought a couple more sacks, but this time he fucked me all the way up. I called him the last, this is the last time I bought weed from him. I called this nigga, he answered whispering again. Hello. I said, man, you at that place again. He told me, hold on, bro, I'm in Bible study. I happened to call this nigga while it was his turn to read and shit. He told me, now Matthew 7, 22 says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You say you're going to need a dog. <laughs> I mean, I'm not doing business with this motherfucker no more. This shit don't feel morally right no more, man. Regardless of what you believe in, he's serving me in church and shit. Why you going to put the choir on hold and then make a sale? <laughs> Isn't it, man? The world changes, man, fast. Social media, 
Social media fucking the world up, clap it up if you agree. It's fucking it up. I ain't guilty, I use it too, but don't mean it's about, about how you use that shit. But what I noticed is what killed me is like, you see a lot of people post shit on Facebook, expose their whole life, and then have nerve to say, you don't know me. <laughs> Think about that shit. I wake up every day, I know what you ate. Breakfast flow. I know where you work. You have on your hard head in the car, rapping to a little song. Charter flow. I know all that shit. Nigga had a nerve to say, I don't let my social media page let you think you know me like you know me and shit. Nigga, is you crazy? I had a random Facebook friend I bumped into downtown a couple weeks ago. Never met this nigga in person. He seen me first off, off social media. He like, right. ain't you King Cooper? I'm like, yeah, I know this off social media because you know, nobody that know me in person called me King Cooper. It's straight off some Facebook shit. But I looked, I recognized this nigga too though off his Facebook page. I said, you Reggie, catch a body Watkins, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, I recognize you. What's up with you, bro? I recognize you. Um, we sat down and had a whole conversation based on this nigga Facebook page. I said, hey, bro, did you ever get that child support shit straight? <laughs> no, I had seen you post a status. You say, uh, he posted a picture of his little son. The caption say, do this nigga really look like me? <laughs> like if he do and comment if he don't. Ain't <laughs> this shit, man. And women don't try to laugh too hard, y'all just as crazy. The finest girls on Facebook and Instagram post the most depressing shit. Looking for attention and shit. All the fine, the finest ones looking for attention. What the hell is wrong? How much reassurance do you need? You get 500 likes per picture and you post 10 pictures a day. You wrapping up and you still want to hear this shit the next day. She wake up looking like Beyonce or somebody and she'll post a picture of herself. The caption say, Ooh, look at me just looking a hot mess today. <laughs> Wait, no dumbass niggas to fall on her comments talking about, no you don't, you so beautiful, and they fall for that shit every single time. At that time, I seen her status last week. Look girl like she might be about 22. Fine as hell, 22. Oh, oh my God, I think I'm gonna just commit suicide later on today. It's like life is just so fucked up. <laughs> I want you to see a thousand dumbass comments from thirsty ass niggas. Oh no, beautiful, you so you so beautiful. Why would you do something like that? You so beautiful, don't do that. But it's always got to be that one super thirsty nigga that got to go against the grain and say some even dumber shit. What do you say? Well, honestly, beautiful, an angel like yourself belongs in heaven anyway. I support your decision. That ain't the killer though. Out of all those dumbass comments she read, she liked his shit. That's the one she liked. Crazy shit, man. But before I go, since this Chris Moley sent uh, our junior last show, I was requested to do a specific joke by Chris Moley Senior. Can y'all clap it up for me, Chris, real quick? I can't even tell the lot, man. I wasn't gonna even do it today, y'all was. It was a personal request, I couldn't turn it down, man. Oh, shit. We gonna find out where the freaks at with this one. <laughs> Any porno watches in here? Yeah! yeah. Have it up with porn, half watch porn? Porn? Yeah. No, so y'all just learned how to fuck on y'all own. <laughs> yeah, a lot of her. Well, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a testify to myself then. I'm gonna tell y'all, I grew up on that shit. Like when I was little, you know, my daddy, our daddy, my generation of fathers, they didn't talk to us about sex and shit like that. They didn't communicate with us. They didn't communicate like that. I remember I got about eight years old. I told my daddy I seen some hair on my balls. He looked at me like, you becoming a man, son. The next day, I just woke up with a girl's own loud tape laying next to my pillow and shit. My daddy didn't know how to talk. He just gave me porn. They watch that shit, you should be good. But you know, back in the day, that shit was like mostly all white. You know, it'd be, it's kind of black now in the new day, but back in the day, it was all white. So from like age, 8 to 12, when I first started fucking, I wasn't really fucking right. Yeah, I wasn't really fucking right from like 8 to 12. I'm gonna tell you, mama, I'm gonna tell you, I started doing Like I said, it was all white. You know what I'm saying? And back in the day, <laughs> but look, back in the day, you had, you had great kids? Yeah. Okay, they got, I'm gonna I'm speak for them to you then. But they did it. Look. Tell them my daughter, Well, you did it then. He bought my age probably, you did. But anyway, back in the day, we was watching that porn, but we used to be sneaky and shit as kids. 
my auntie, you know, she used to give us a babysitter. You know how them old school black homes is when y'all had to go to work. You go get a babysitter, I babysitter, she 11 and we 10 and shit. We used to do whatever the hell we wanted in that damn home. You know how it go, look at it. We used to do whatever we wanted in ours. For real. But look, back in the day, like I said, that shit was all white and it was on tape. And it was already a little blurry, but that's where I learned from. But we used to be sneaky as hell as kids. You remember back in the day, the tape had the timer at the retirement right for me and my cousin, we be huddled up like y'all know. Look, the timer say 3.45. So when we do watching this, we have to rewind it back to 3.45. Or TT gonna beat the shit out of us. You already know. Let, let TT come home and see that motherfucker timer on 6.48. Who the fuck? What? Yo, somebody can never watch three minutes of fucking, I can tell you. I know what I left this motherfucker on. That motherfucker better be back on 3.45. We be nervous as hell watching them pornos and shit when we was little. Illinois and shit, you be, we already playing with ourselves and shit. Illinois and shit, we're in the house and shit. Shut that shit down. I thought somebody was coming up the steps. <laughs> but like I said, though, for real, but back in the day, that shit was all white. But the good thing about them old school white pornos, though, is they actually had a real storyline and shit, didn't it? You really can enjoy watching that shit like Young and the Rest is that old school white porn, didn't it? It always started off the same way, too. It be a white lady, she in her office, it's one o'clock in the morning. She in a little cubicle doing her work with some shit. You know what I'm saying? Around the corner, some big 6'9", Janet, a cocky dude motherfucker, he got on a tight ass uniform. He's sweeping his shit, dick printer showing all in the pants. And look, he always just happened to be sweeping in her office and shit. She had the desk working. He, he know this shit's on rock hard. He just happened to be, he just happened to be sweeping in her shit. She getting distracted and she getting looking at uh, 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 Frank, Frank, you working late tonight, buddy? He got a deep ass voice. Yeah, Mrs. Smith, just getting some overtime, man. That's all I'm trying to do. Turn her on and shit. And then the scene just cut. And they just straight fucking. You know what I'm saying? Them old school white porn was. You could never hear a moan or none of that shit in them old school porn did. It. But it was always that little romantic ass music. You know what So from like age 8 to 12, I wasn't really fucking like that. That's all I had. Well, about, about, excuse me, about 2002 or 3, oh, when that black shit started getting popular, oh, I started putting in work then, mama. Mama, I was putting in work. I'm sorry to confess. I'm sorry to confess now. I know I'm grown now. I was putting in work, baby. And you know, when old school black pornos was having a get on ratchet. You know, the white ones, they was more polished and shit. They even took real movie names and remixed. They had taken a movie like Planet of the Apes, we call it. Big Dick Planet of the Apes and some shit like that. White men can't jump me, white men can't hump and shit like that. Them black pornos and ghetto shit were straight to the point. Ghetto Booty 1, Ghetto Booty 2, Ghetto Booty 3, Ghetto Booty 4. You already know that black shit, ghetto ass. That's what we here for. But hey, but what kill you about them dead old black pornos though, this is what kill you the most. Why that shit always have a rap video at the beginning of that motherfucker? Some nigga come out of nowhere with a braids talking about, yo, big fat ass apple bottom booty, use a cutie, on duty. Like, what the fuck? These niggas rapping on the porno set? That ain't a cute though, shit's so ghetto. The same, you, the, the camera change, and the same nigga who was just rapping be the nigga that's fucking in the video and shit. Talk about that ain't all I do, nigga. I do all this shit, nigga. I do all this shit, nigga. Get over that shit, man. One of my favorite niggas, though, from the black era, that nigga Wesley Pipes. Anybody know Wesley Pipes? Yeah. Yeah, anybody else? Let me I'm going to introduce you to Wesley Pipes. Y'all have a serious this to I recognize that nigga. What's the point? What the fuck? 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 What be still. Now arch that, arch that motherfucker. You better arch that motherfucker. Or right, hold it right there. Hey, you got about 12 inches. You know your shit long when you call out numbers and shit. Hold on, I'm finna put nine in. 
Oh, that sound. You at the man. You a freshman right now. You saw that man. And you know you ready for the team. Oh, that's team. I guess I waited, but you was taking too long. So I made you a sophomore. You a sophomore. Get your credits up, you gon' get the 11. Ah, that's true, credit. She was junior. You a junior, you got the 11. You almost said graduated. Ain't nobody ever took the whole 12. Ah, you took the whole 12. I'm so proud of you. Nigga turned into DJ Khaled in the pussy. You smart. You loyal. You made it disappear. Go buy yourself a house. Go buy your mother a house. I'm the best. Look at that. Hey, I'm King Cooper, man. I appreciate y'all. Boche, 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 man. Fuck Jesus. Fuck Spider Man. Fuck anything that's going on in St. Louis that ain't my comic special. Child birthday, irrelevant. If you have a baby, irrelevant. Give a fuck. Bring him her. Real shit. Bring him, baby. Newborn. Keep it in. in biblical core, all that. Bring her. We got bartenders that have sniffed the umbilical core. That'll be nice.